This video was brought to you by Elbilmerk, a bedroom planner, storing by Ken Power and Bill Componenter. Yo, what's up? We're now at Garden One Supercharger and I have some great news. I heard it in the news and I just want to talk about it. Tesla, they're going to upgrade the superchargers to 800 volt. Well, okay, let me explain. Over here, uh, this is kind of weird hybrid solution where you have the V4 supercharger stalls uh, in combination with the V3 supercharger stalls. And then also in Europe, there's V2, but we don't have it here. So what is nice about the V3, no, sorry, the V4 is that you have here, well, you see, there's a screen there. And then, wait, where are it supposed to be? You're supposed to be able to pay with card. Maybe these didn't have it. Yeah, but, uh, um, you know, these are more future-proof. And you will see that uh, eventually this will be what uh, everyone, I mean, what they are going to roll out. But uh, the weird thing is that in Thailand, they're still rolling out only V3s there. I'm not sure what's up with that. But okay, so back to the upgrade. There will be a new V4 supercharger cabinet coming out next year. And that will support 500 kilowatt on each stall or a maximum 500 kilowatt in a stall. So what you see over here, that's the V4. No, sorry, this is sorry. This is the V3 power module. And each of these power stacks, they supposedly have 525 kilowatt and they can supply four stalls each. So we have 10, 10 power modules. And then this site has 40 stalls. So that's how it works. So actually one, one stall, if all of them are busy, you will get only around 100 and how much is that? 130 something kilowatt each. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, Tesla and also other CPOs I talked to and also Kempower, don't remember how it was, but uh, they have seen in the statistics that uh, as of 2024, most cars, they cannot take that kind of crazy speeds over time. So average charging speed is usually around 80 to 100 kilowatt only. But okay, so what they could do eventually, we haven't seen it yet, but there will be a V4 type stack. Looks probably different than these. And they can provide power to uh, eight different stalls instead of four. But each stall, actually these are already future proof. So these stalls will eventually be able to take 500 kilowatt and you know, goes from 400 to 1000 volt. Uh, what? I don't know if they will ever uh, upgrade these, I'm not sure. But uh, also another thing is that uh, these stacks, the new V4 stack is 2% more efficient. So that means less heat loss and then more money saved for Tesla. So um, let me just... Uh, <laughs> I think that's a follower, yes. <laughs> so I have to go check on uh, Isabel because uh, she's uh, over here. Yo Isabel, are you okay? Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I opened the window here, so in, in case she needs me. But, um, yeah. So, you know, that's great news for 400, no, sorry, for 800 volt cars, because eventually, uh, Ionic 5 or whatever, right? The 800 volt cars, they will be able to utilize the full potential here. As of today, most 800 volt cars, depending on how they do it, they get roughly 100 to maybe 120 kilowatt only on these 250 kilowatt chargers. So in the future, yeah, there will be, I think there will be branded as 500 kilowatt. But, um, uh, you know, as the math says, if you have, yeah, yeah, okay. Another thing they said, uh, or I heard it in the news is that, uh, according to Tesla themselves, one stack, which can provide eight stalls, right? Needs less than one megawatt to provide uh, enough power to all the cars connected. 99% of the time, that's what they said. So roughly said, roughly 100 to 110 kilowatt average is needed. But of course, as uh, the cars charge faster, as the battery go becomes bigger, then uh, Tesla, they can just upgrade those stacks here to become more powerful. Uh, yeah, and then the stalls, maybe in the future, the stalls can actually provide all that. Uh, in comparison, Ionity, they actually try to, well, okay, even they cannot guarantee 350 kilowatt on each stall if all the stalls are occupied. So they also have some limitation, but from what I heard from, from Ionity, the limit is higher. They, uh, you know, they have, oh, okay, I forgot to, yeah. 
I'm going to show you that behind those power, th these are the ones that uh, transform and do what they were right to regulate the, the voltage. But behind there, those are the transformers. Yeah, Mure transformer, they were. And I think each of those are roughly, I'm not sure if that's uh, 1250 kVA or uh, 2500 kVA or something, right? So uh, in terms of megawatt, this could be something like uh, two to four megawatts. But in comparison, so when it comes to as of today here, right, uh, each stall doesn't get that much power around 120, 130 kilowatt. But Ionity, uh, I think even if uh, like uh, uh, four empty tie cans or whatever, right, arrive and charge at Ionity, I think they should still get around 200 something kilowatt each. So, yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying now is almost pointless because it almost never happens. But it's a nice upgrade that Tesla now uh, provides power to eight stalls instead of four. In the beginning, V2 power modules or stack, whatever, actually, <laughs> yeah, you guys know the history, right? They actually use the onboard charger. What you actually find in that, that blue Tesla there, they use those onboard chargers they were originally 10, 11 kilowatt each, and you can also get the dual charger with two of those 11 kilowatt to get 22 kilowatt. But uh, Tesla, they, when they put those onboard chargers in the power stack, the V2, V1 power stack, they overclock them and run them at around, uh, I think it was around 14, 15 kilowatt each. So they needed roughly, uh, I'm not sure it was 12, or how many uh, onboard chargers in the supercharger stack back then to uh, to get roughly 150 kilowatts. But then it wasn't made for that kind of usage, right? So those V2 supercharger stacks, they needed to be uh, main, like maintained. The, the onboard chargers would eventually break down and they had to go there and replace those onboard chargers. So the V3 is a lot bigger improvement uh, in terms of reliability and also probably cost. But just the V2 was already a good, uh, good deal that you already had existing hardware in those cars and you reuse them in the, uh, in, in the, 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 the supercharger. So I feel like the, the V4 stack is just one step forward. And yeah, previously you guys have seen that uh, when we talk about chem power, yeah, a couple of years ago, they were like, ah, chem, power, chem power is nice, but they don't support 400 volt. Why don't they do it now? Whatever you see now around Norway, at least, the new Kemp power sites, they are already 800 volt ready. And yeah, okay, it's similar. I don't have it here, but as an example, Kemp power is similar. Um, there will also be some kind of power stack, but at least they have unlimited, like one power stack can supply maybe 10, 15, whatever uh, stalls. Uh, and then each power stack is 25 kilowatts. Uh, but then they just uh, add, uh, I mean, they, they added the, the 800 volt uh, architecture support on the power stack. As long as the, the, the stall are prepared for it, then they are 800 volt ready, right? Or already 800 volt uh, uh, operational now. So eventually Tesla supercharger will also be 800 volt. Then the question is, when will the 800 volt Teslas come? <laughs> well, the Cybertruck is already 800 volt and also um, uh, semi, semi, but then maybe what about Roadster? I bet Roadster will also be 800 volt. So eventually, yeah, I, I'm not against 800 volt. I'm just saying that as for now, if you have something like this that has 77 kilowatt hour battery and charges at 160 kilowatt, then the bottleneck is not the 800 volt or 400 volt architecture. Uh, you know, 160 kilowatts, uh, you need roughly 400 amp only to charge it. And you cannot maintain 160 kilowatts for too long anyway, right? But eventually, if you get cars with uh, like 200 uh, kilowatt hour battery and more, and especially trucks that has 400, 500 kilowatt hour battery, then of course 800 volt makes sense. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not against 800 volt. I'm more against the 800 volt hype. They think that everything will be better if they are 800 volt, and that is of course not true. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, from what I remember, also the new site at Yesheim also seems to have only the V4. Yeah, sorry, sorry, not the V, my man. The, v, the V4 stall, but the V3 stacks. But if Tesla is smart, which they are probably because it's run by Elon Musk, <laughs> 
these should be compatible so that eventually Tesla could just replace these V3 stacks with V4 stacks. And then also, if they did the groundwork correctly, then they can also in, uh, upgrade the V3 stalls, remove the, all the V3 stalls and replace them with V4 stalls. You see the foundation on the V3 and V4, they're already exactly the same. So it's more like, it's more like Ionity, they already made things future-proof long time before the cars were ready. That's Ionity's uh, philosophy and probably because the, um, the owners of Ionity, you know, the, like uh, Porsche, I'm just trolling with you guys, Audi, BMW, I mean Vogue, well, they want that kind of premiumness. But Tesla, more like uh, Ken Power, they just figure out that, well, this is good enough for now. And then as time goes, they upgrade it to become faster and faster when the cars are ready for it. So, yeah, anyway, I think I'm just gonna end it here. So, great news, we'll see next year. Hopefully in Norway, it should come quite early. In Norway, the V4 stocks, stacks, we'll see how it goes. And then eventually, I'll be able to drive maybe 1,000 kilometer challenge with an 800 volt car and charge on V4 superchargers. Okay, anyway, I think that's gonna be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.